Good morning, Messy Church families. It's great to be with you again for our November Messy Church Fun. We've done things slightly differently this time, and I hope all of you managed to pick up packs from the Haven last week for the activities. Oh, I see Freddie has his. Oh, Holly, great, you've got yours. I hope that's going to keep you busy and out of mischief. So today we're looking at loving and sharing. <laughs> well done, guys. And building your life on firm foundations. In the Bible, Jesus tells us a story about two men who live their lives in very different ways. So let's listen to the book of Matthew, where Jesus said, So then, anyone who hears these words of mine and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded over, and the wind blew hard against the house. But it did not fall because it was built on rock. But anyone who hears these words of mine and does not obey them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. And the rain poured down and the rivers flooded and the wind blew hard against that house and it fell. And what a terrible fall it was. When Jesus finished saying these things, the crowd was amazed at the way he taught. He wasn't like the other teachers of the law. Instead, he taught with authority. So let's go and join the rest of the team, exploring this story with some fun activities and watch out for some familiar faces at the end. Bye for now. Hello everyone, it's Margaret here again and thank you for joining us at Messy Church at Home. Myrene's just read us one of the stories that Jesus told in the Bible. Many of these stories talk about everyday happenings, but there's always a deeper meaning for us to take. So when you hear about the wise man building his house on a rock, on a firm foundation, that teaches us to build our lives also on a firm foundation. God is often described as a rock. So we, if we build our lives in him and all the teachings in the Bible, we'll find that we care more about other people and about other living things because we're actually responsible for the world that we live in. This activity is one way we can show that we care for the birds that we see outside. And especially in the winter time, they, they sometimes need a bit of help. So we're going to make a bird feeder. Now to make the bird feeder, you need uh, some pipe cleaners, at least one long pipe cleaner. You need some cereal. I've got Cheerios because they happen to be in the house, but any any breakfast cereal hoops or loops like these are ideal and you need some string or some ribbon to tie it up with and when it's finished it should look something like this that's made from one pipe cleaner I'm wearing a heart shaped so the birds will know we love them and this is made from two uh, pipe cleaners it's a wee bit bigger but we're just going to do one at the moment uh, because it'll take a long time if we're putting lots and lots of uh, cereal loops onto our pipe cleaners. So, first thing we do is fold our pipe cleaner into half. And then we have the point down here at the bottom and that's our, the bottom of our heart shape. And then we're going to just thread the cereal, the little loops, onto each side. Um, just they move on, slip on quite easily. Uh, just take your time, pop them on. Don't take too many while you're doing it. There we go. 
Pipe cleaners are really useful things. I mean, it's in the name, they're supposed to clean pipes, but I don't think, I think very few people actually use them now for cleaning pipes. Remember my granddad used to smoke a pipe and he used his pipe cleaners to clean out his pipe. Um, but nowadays there are really useful craft uh, thing to use because they do exactly what you tell them. You can bend them into any shape at all, which is it's really handy. So I've got up to the top of the, this half here, and I've got my cereal on. And when I get to the top, I'm just going to bend this wee bit back. And that's so these won't fall off when I start on the other side. So I'm on to the other side now, and I'm threading them on. Uh, one or two at a time. Um, I'm sure the birds all love these. It says in the packet they're very healthy. Um, Full of good things. Um, there we go. Let's carry on threading, popping them on. That's it. There we are. I feel I should have some music or something playing in the background just now. <laughs> Nearly there. A few more to go. That's us. Right, I think that should probably do us. One more. So we have our pipe cleaner with our breakfast loops and a little bit at the top and then we're going to use this little bit at the top simply to twist round. Tie it round, twist it round, whatever you do it, it just stays in place. That They're really handy things, pipe cleaners. So once we've done that, if you pop that down in the middle and the two sides come up and we get our heart shape and then you need your bit of string or your bit of ribbon. Just cut that off. Here we go. Just tie it on here. Whatever length you want. Depends where you're going to hang it. Um, might just be outside your window. There might be a tree nearby. Might be a bush. And I'm sure your, uh, your heart-shaped um, bird feeder will look great. Be a good idea if you actually spot birds on your bird feeder to take a photo of it and maybe send it into Mylene and she could put it up on the Haven Facebook page and we could all share each other's um, uh, birds enjoying the food. So I hope you enjoy making your bird feeder and I hope that the birds spot it and come and enjoy feeding especially through the winter months. See you again next time. Bye for now. Hello everyone, welcome to my bit of messy church, my name's Lindsay and for this activity you're going to need 10 Lego bricks, so I've got 10 Lego bricks here, you're going to need a sharpie or some kind of pen that can write on Lego, took me a while to find this, and you're going to need a Bible verse, the Bible verse that we're talking about today written out on a bit of paper. So, first thing that you're going to do is you're going to try and build a structure with the 10 Lego bricks. And this took me a little while to figure out the best way of doing it, but this is the structure that I've gone for. You can see it just here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to write one verse from the Bible, um, one word from each verse on each brick. So I'm going to do that just now. So you're going to have to write them in order. So I'm going to start with the word the. You can see I started already to see whether it would work. So I'm writing on the the. And then I'm going to take that off so I don't get in a muddle. Oops, all falling apart. Then I'm going to write. Let me just check I've got this the right order. Yeah, that way round. Then I'm going to write on the next one. So I've written the word the. Then I'm going to write wise and this is the verse that we're learning about today the wise oh dear that's not a very good e right there we go man oh i'm trying to remember my order now yeah the man was on the brown man 
the wise man built I think I've gone wrong with my order but never mind built built written on the red one his <laughs> I hope you can see what I'm doing here his there we go house So we're talking about building things and at the same time we're using Lego blocks. So the wise man built his house on... So I've chosen a small Lego block for that. It doesn't have to be Lego, Duplo would be fine. On the... Oh, my writing is very shaky. Sorry, everyone. The <laughs> rock. So the wise man built his house on the rock. So we're talking about being built on something solid, on rock. So we're using Lego to show that. And then I've chosen my longest Lego block, which is going to be at the bottom to show that it's going to be strong. So I've chosen my longest one to have the Bible verse on it, in the name of the verse, which is Matthew. And it's in chapter 7, if you want to look it up. And it's verse 24. So... Tom, if you don't mind, can you just pan down and show the bricks? So you can see here, I've got all the bricks written here. And now you can try and build it. Thank you, Tom. So the wise man built his house. I don't know how good my Lego, stru Lego structure is. On... The rock. And there's the Bible verse right at the end. Well, you can see that my structure... I can sit back down now, Tom, thanks. You can see that my structure isn't quite the same as I began with, but you can still see the Bible verse written on it. And what you could do is you could take... You could um, spend time as a family writing those words out. Then you could take them apart, mix them all up and make it a challenge to see if you can get them in the right order again. And by doing that and by making a game, you never know, you might even memorise it. You might even have learnt the verse. So let me see if I know it. I think I do know it. I think it's the wise man built his house on the rock. Matthew 7 verse 24. And so what that's teaching us is that we can build each other up so we can tell each other nice things we can say good things to each other and make each other feel better and make each other feel stronger and help each other so maybe this week you could try and think of some way of building somebody up saying something nice to someone like i like your hair or thank you for helping me with that math sum that i was stuck on or, thank you for making me breakfast, Mum. Something like that. Try and encourage each other, and that will make each other stronger. So, have fun with the Lego bricks, and thank you for listening. Bye! Hello again. Another virtual Macy Church. My name's Audrey and I've been coming to Macy Church since it first started. I'm really missing seeing you all, but as I've said before, this is the next best thing. Today, we're thinking about the story that Jesus told about the wise and foolish builders. We read about it in the book of Matthew in the Bible, chapter 7, verses 24 to 29. When we follow Jesus, we choose to serve him. Part of serving Jesus means going out of our way to love, support and serve those around us. Today, I'm not doing a science activity, I'm doing an art and craft activity. And we're going to make mosaic love hearts that you can display somewhere in your house, in your windows, and it will let people know who live in our houses or walk by our houses know that we want to share our love with them. So for this activity, you need a heart-shaped piece of acetate or clear plastic, some tissue circles, a pair of scissors, and 
a glue stick. So the first thing we need to do is cut our tissue circles into small squares that we can glue onto our heart shape. To make this easy, I just take the circles and I fold them in half. I then just cut strips of the tissue paper. And then pick up the strips that I've cut, cut off the ends and cut little rectangles that we can then glue onto our love heart. So you cut up all your tissue circles. I'm going to push mine to the side. The next thing you need is your plastic heart. What I'm going to do is glue around the edge to start off my mosaic. Just a little glue all the way around the edge of the love heart. Now you'll be able to take more time and do this more carefully than I am, but all you then need to do is take your tissue paper and stick it down, different colours, all the way around the edge of the love heart. Once you've filled in the edge of your love heart, you can then glue the inside. And take a little time and a lot of care and just stick down mosaic shapes all through your love heart. Now in Blue Peter fashion, I've already prepared one. This is what your love heart will look, out, look like once you've finished it. And the very last thing you need to do is put your love heart somewhere in your house or in a window where other people can see it. They will then know that you love and care for them. I hope that you both share your love this week and feel the love and support of others throughout the week. Hi, my name is Rosie and I'm so excited to tell you a story today and do a bit of a talk. Um, first of all, I hope you're all well. I cannot believe we're already in November. This year is flying by um, and I hope you're finding some time to get outside and enjoy the autumnal leaves as they look beautiful on the trees right, uh, right now. It's very pretty around Stirling. Um, so I wanted to share with you one of my favourite stories actually and I think it's so relevant um, today um, and just for all of our lives and everything that's going on. So I don't know if you've ever heard um, the story or maybe you've heard the song um, about a wise man who, who built his house upon a rock. Um, I won't sing you the song, I'll spare you that, um, but it's definitely one to learn maybe from someone else who knows it or look up on YouTube and learn it. It's really, really good. Um, so I'm going to kind of um, start with asking a couple of questions. So I don't know if you know the story, um, but it'd be interesting to know, you know, where the two houses were built, which one took longer to build and why, which actually took more energy to build and which of the houses stayed standing when it rained. Do you know which one fell down and why the house built on sand uh, actually fell down? I'm going to tell you the story of um, this wise man and these two different houses um, and feel free if you want to um, to act along. You could mind building the houses. You can mind being a storm. That might be quite fun, actually. Um, so once there was a man who decided to build a house, he found a nice patch of sand and set to work. He looked at the house and he was really very happy. It had gone up really, really quickly. And actually, he was ready for a little cup of tea. 
A little way over, another man was building a house. He was building up on a plot that was so, so hard to dig. There was massive, massive big rocks and stones to dig out, huge foundations to dig and actually cement to then put in. And then the bricks, oh, few. He had to actually stop quite a few times a day for a cup of tea. It was a lot of hard walk, work, sorry. He built the walls, he put in the windows and the doors, and then at last he finished the roof. Look at that, he said. The house on the beach is finished. I didn't even notice the foundations going in. Oh, well, we're finished now. It's taken ages, but I am happy. It's a nice, comfy, strong house. And just as they said that, outside his front door, he put out his hand and some raindrops fell. Oh my goodness, is that rain? And he saw the storm coming towards his house. So he went in to wait, wait off the storm. Goodness me, that was a massive, a gigantic storm, basically. He went outside to see um, the clear skies and he looked around and there was no trace of the house um, that was built on the sand. There was actually just a pile of rubble where it was. The storm was, storm was so strong for the house on the sand. It was weak as it had no foundations and the sand moved and the house shook in the storm and it fell to the ground. The house on the rocks was strong. The storm hit it, but nothing happened to it. What a great story. Jesus used this example of building a house on sand and a house on a rock. Um, can you remember which house took longer to build? It was a house on the rock. Can you remember which house was harder to build? Again, it was the house on the rock. And which one was the strongest? Again, it was a house on the rock. This story reminds us that we have foundations, not made of concrete like the house, but when we listen to the stories about Jesus and how kind he was and how he tried to be fair and truthful, and when we try to be like him, we are making foundations to help us make the wise choices and have these fantastic foundations. We make loads and loads of choices of how much we care about people and try to do certain things. I wonder if we try maybe even harder, say kind words and do kind things to help others um, and we can build better foundations. And also trusting in God as well is an amazing, amazing way uh, to build foundations. And when we are hit with life's different storms, um, I know certainly when I've been busy with work and built foundations built on sand and just my own steam, uh, um, I've definitely <laughs> maybe fallen down. And actually when I've built my, my foundations in, in Jesus and his stories and um, having kind words and really, really trusting in God, that when these storms hit, yes, it is hard, but I know I'm not going to fall down. Um, so I'm just going to pray. Loving Lord Jesus, we, um, we would like to be more like you, but we need you to help us. I pray that in these coming weeks and days that you can um, help us be kinder with our words and our actions and encourage and help us to build strong, strong foundations on you so that when life storms hit us, that we can um, not fall down and have our strong foundations built in you. Thank you for showing us how much you care for us. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. This is what I miss about Messy Church. I miss the family dinners, I miss the lovely people, and I miss the arts and craft. Hi everyone, it's Annie and Freddie. We've all been missing you lots and can't wait to see you back soon. And my favourite thing about Mom. Messy Church is when Me. we get together and sit down and eat. <laughs> and I really like the activities and what we do. And I really like how much some chat for people. And, yeah. and what do you miss about Two. Messy Church? Just uh, um just that we because of COVID we can't really That's sit down one. and eat together and talk. That's what I miss. Okay. One. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rain came tumbling down. The rain came down.
down and the floods came up. The rain came down and the floods came up. The rain came down and the floods came up. But the house on the rock stood firm. Upon the sand, the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand, and the rain came tumbling down. The rain came down, and the floods came up. The rain came down, and the floods came up. The rain came down, and the floods came up, and the house on the sand fell flat. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ And the blessings come tumbling down The prayers go up and the blessings come down The prayers go up and the blessings come down The prayers go up and the blessings come down So build your life on Him The prayers go up and the blessings come down The prayers go up and the blessings come down The prayers go up and the blessings come down So build your life on Him